Good. So, so let's take on his argument a little bit because, I mean, there is racism in America. You yourself said a number of your students at Southern Illinois or Eastern Illinois were members of the Klan. I, I didn't even know they were still members of the Klan. And um, I mean, Tenny Hilsey tells the story of his own life, which is filled seemingly with, with uh, racism where he is the target of racism. Um, you know, there was a civil rights movement for a reason, right? Because pre-civil rights, things were really bad in this country. And, yes. and of course, there was ultimately slavery. So how do you position, how do you position your love of America and the love of values and, and the opportunities and your experiences being black in America with the existential reality that there was a lot of, you know, there was slavery, there was Jim Crow, and there is some racism still around today. How do you how do you take all of that into account uh, in 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 your view of modern America? Because I well because I think there are a couple of things to think about. One is that America is a very progressive, and I don't mean in the sort of the way that liberals have co opted the word progressive. America is a very progressive society. Uh, for such a young country, if you look at how far we have come in terms of overcoming sexism, overcoming racism. Now we have marital equality in this country. America has at its claw, at its core, I think a self-reflexivity clause where we are always a self-questioning society, always looking at the ways in which we can reflect on our flaws and correct our mistakes. And I think that the debt has been paid. I think the debt was paid whether one, there are people who disagree with the 1964 Civil Rights Act, and I think that there's, there's that, however one debates that, I think the debt to Black Americans was paid in that, in that act. That is granting them equality before the law, recognizing equal uh, citizenships, citizenship along with their um, compatriots. But it went even further than that. It went uh, to the point of making private citizens unable to discriminate against blacks. So I think that the debt has been paid and to ask the state to go any further in outlawing every form of private racism, short of a bloated totalitarian state, that's impossible. But I think also as a university professor who has been teaching for almost 23 years now, when I look out at America, I see a progressive America that if you are a black man or a black woman, we have a progressive environment in which universities will welcome you with open arms, right? We have progressed beyond a certain pale of racism in this country where to be black is to command an enormous amount of social power. Look at what happened in Starbucks when these two men got arrested and look at the outrage. Yep. Right. Uh, look at what happened a couple of weeks ago. This woman calls the police on a black man who's wearing socks in a pool or a black woman who's in a pool. And um, the white woman calls a cop on her. They both lose their jobs. I think that Ta-Nehisi Coates actually overstates the position. And I see a progressive America in which race relations have become better. And I lived in a deep South for eight years. Yeah. Um, in predominantly white communities because housing was cheap. And I do not think that I live in a country circa Mississippi, 1950. Yep. It, incidentally, the so race- not, So you're not denying the existence of racism in America today. You're no. just saying it is not a barrier to success. Uh, and and it's, it's something that can and, and should be overcome and that the state has no further role to play? Well, the state has a role to play when racism is being um, foisted or being, uh, when the state is the, the primary, prim the primary um, instigator of racism right. or committing the, the primary um, crime against violating individual rights. Yeah. But I think what we are seeing, which points to the press progressivism of uh, America is that social ostracism, which Rand talked about in her essay on racism in the virtue of selfishness. Mm -hmm. Social ostracism is one way that I think racism is being fought in this country where people are attempting 
are threatening to boycott Star Starbucks because of two black men who are sitting there waiting for a white friend get arrested. They're doing nothing of their own. Um, and progressive Americans, and I don't mean progressive Americans on the left, I just mean people who are possessed of fair-mindedness say, if this is the way you're going to treat two innocent black men, well, we're not going to buy your coffee anymore, yeah. right? I think if we want a bloated totalitarian state that is going to interfere in the lives of individuals, individuals who have every right to treat their businesses and their, um, their private lives as extensions of their living room, then that's not freedom and that's not liberty. And norms and mores have changed in such a way that I don't think anyone can go and put up a, a colored sign or in a bathroom today in a restaurant yeah. and get away with it. The outrage would be so. Um, yeah, I mean, even right, if it was legal, legal. even if, if it was legal. Right. Yeah, it would be so. Right. I think the outrage would be unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Even in places in the South. It would be, it would be. I think that I think that we have transformed enormously as a society towards fair-mindedness, towards women, towards blacks, and now towards gays. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I think we should we should we should continue to the extent that we do value uh, a philosophy of individualism to continue to promote that sort of ethos. Um, Incidentally, I must say that when I read Ta-Nehisi Coates' book, Beyond the World, um, or Between the World and Me, the racism that he experienced primarily was racism directed against him by Blacks. Now, it, it, there's one incident in which a white woman sort of shoved his son along and said, move along, and he made a big deal out of it. Yeah. But most, most, I read that book very carefully, most of the problems that he um, experience during his childhood was with black on black crime and it was with other black black men it wasn't with the police he didn't have any run-ins with the police uh, it was it was a fear that he had of being assaulted by by other black men which now, again is now he just he explains that as as you know this is the kind of you know uh, social environment within the black community created by racism I mean, that well, was his explanation, right? Right. Well, I, you know, my, my rejoinder to that always is yeah. coming back to the greatest civilization that I think has ever existed on the face of the earth with it, which is the Jewish civilization. Yeah. I don't know of any phenomenon called Jew on Jew crime. And you couldn't point to a civilization that has been more persecuted by, the, by states across civilizations, right? Um, by private citizens, and at the same time, we don't have Jewish people forming gangs and killing each other. So